So hello and welcome to the Live Motocross podcast. A bit of a special one for you today. We've got probably three quarters of Team Revo uh, sat on the other end of the line. Um, Mark, Sam, Dylan, say hello to everyone on the podcast. Hi everyone. How's it going? <laughs> now, this has not been done before, to be honest, at Live. We've only normally coped with two or three people on the podcast, so this might be a little bit back and forth. Um, but one of the things we wanted, we wanted really to get you guys on for is one, we've obviously got some big news from you guys going into next year. Um, and two, we want to hear a little bit about, um, say Mark, for example, Mark, how, how has the team been coping with the whole pandemic? And obviously we didn't have any racing, but how have you guys worked around that? Uh, I mean, racing for us is obviously is, is is second to what we do as a business at, at Revo. So it's not mm. you know, it's not something that we rely on as a, as any sort of income or living. So, but obviously, uh, after the end of twenty nineteen, we made a conscious conscious decision to to take a year out, which has probably been the mm. best hindsight ever, considering twenty twenty had a pandemic. So you know, yeah. we, we could have been in a position where we uh, you know committed to. Uh, doing full British and GPs again, you know, employing people, truck drivers, so on and so on. So we've been fortunate that we we took that decision not to do it. It was an internal decision because, you know, we were going through various changes within the company. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, through the course of this year, 2019, we we focused on just Revo, which is doing extremely well at the moment. And it was always a plan to come back again. Um, so, you know, we're in a situation where we did assist Dylan was the back end of this year because Dylan was uh, a little bit all over the shot with New Zealand, then the US with various promises mm -hmm. made, but never came to fruition. So we had the opportunity to bring him back to the UK and I managed to get him a ride with uh, Matt Smith Racing, which we supported. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, he was no British, so it was a little bit short-lived. He'd done a few nationals, but then we were involved in obviously getting him set up with Jackie Martins Racing to do the back end of the GP season, which we was in a position then obviously to support Dylan uh, and, and allow that to happen, which then in turn really has just allowed us to to get to where we're going to be going for 2021. Absolutely. I mean, Dylan, how have you found it? Because obviously you are back and forth New Zealand-wise. Has it been quite difficult for you? Uh, it's not been too bad. It's a little bit stressful here and there, but I feel like I'm the only one that's done like a world tour during a pandemic. So, <laughs> no, it's been not too bad, but yeah, I've had good people around me like Mark and Sam and a few others that have been helping me out, making it as yeah easy as possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good news. Now, we touched a little bit there on um, plans going into the 2021 season. Um, Sam... I hear you've now got an official job role going into next year. Yeah, well, I did have an official one last year, but now <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> now I am the team manager. Apparently, mm -hmm. so even though last year I did run most of it because the old man obviously had major heart surgery and was out for a considerable amount of time. Yeah. So I think I'm qualified for it, hopefully, but. <laughs> It should That's be it. You're going to end up getting put to the test then. Yeah, no, definitely. So looking forward to it, to be honest. Ah, uh, it's good news. It's nice to see teams actually getting this organised already. I mean, what are we? Sort of third week into November. Still, from what I've heard, a lot of the teams are still kind of deciding what riders they're going to have. They're still putting everything together. Do you think maybe um, you having this year off does help get everything speeded up a little bit? Well, to be fair, it's all kind of come around in the last 48 hours, the last 72 hours from the weekend. We kind of made a, a, a rash decision on uh, Friday night after discussing a few things with Dylan, and then it all yeah. just kind of fell into place really quick, obviously. Ross Burridge from Kawasaki has been brilliant, and yep. he's managed to put a deal together for us rather quick, so... And being that we worked with them in 2012 and 13, it's quite nice to go back to a different brand. Mm -hmm. Because obviously predominantly, especially for me, I've been with KTM Husqvarna since 2014. So yeah, it'd be yeah. nice to obviously just go to a different brand and see what we can do. Absolutely. Now, going into... Um like I say, we keep harping on about 2021, but you've also got another rider that's, want to say, making a comeback? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on this one. I mean, you obviously, uh, we've got James Dunn as well. Um, you know, that he's the part of this quartet. Uh, obviously, James isn't with us today. Uh, we, mm-hmm. we're, still, we're trying to get us all together in the same place uh, to be able to do this. Um, yeah, James, obviously, he rode in 2019 um, mm-hmm. with some support uh, with Gear Tech on the Hasvana. Uh, mm-hmm. And he had some some reasonable, you know, some good finishes, I think, around the top four or five. On, the, on on occasion, um, you know, we just felt you know we could we, we needed a strong team with two riders, um, and uh, actually James's father uh, Gary he actually is uh, the operations uh, manager at Revo as well. So mm-hmm. it's, it all came about that way really. And you know, Dylan had, Dylan's struggled just getting a few bits and pieces done this year and, and with promises. So we just had to get this thing put together, and it it really needed to be a strong stronger effort than just one rider um mm-hmm. so i mean obviously we've spoken about it so far and nobody's said yet what the team is but sam obviously did say kawasaki so yeah. i think it is important obviously to say that obviously this this announcement is that we are with kawasaki uh but also not not to to, to forget to say that we've got incredible support from roger larson at seven uh mx in, mm-hmm. in the us which is will be part of the team now so it is actually uh revo seven uh kawasaki so wow! So we, you know, we're really pleased to get this going. But James, James, I think James it will be a good, solid, um, you know, uh, partner to ja- to Dylan. So we mm-hmm. just we're just going to, you know, do what we've done before. Just put a good, you know, do a good job and produce a good bike. And we, if we've got the riders, and I think, you know, everyone knows how capable Dylan is. So you know, it, it's, it's our, our aim is to to take a back to back. And you know, technically, was Dylan and the team are still the reigning MX2 champions because there was no champion this year. So yeah, going yeah, of course. It, the, the idea is to go for a back-to-back taking an MX1 title as well. You've actually stole one of my questions there because that was going to be oh. one of the ones later on. <laughs> um, but obviously, you know, James, James had a bit of time out um, that year before. Um, how is he sort of working towards being ready to race for next year, do you think? He's uh, obviously he's been having to work as well to make a living. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he has, he, he still obviously does a level of training and fitness. Obviously, bike fitness is totally different. So, mm-hmm. in all fairness, he hasn't been on a bike for a long time. And, mm-hmm. you know, he is desperate and waiting to get his training bike, which are imminent. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, you know, but yeah, he's, he's got, he's got a lot more work ahead of him than, you know, than Dylan, obviously, because, yeah, you know, Dylan's obviously been riding and, and, fin- and, you know, his last GP was only what, two two weeks ago. So, yeah, it's two three weeks. Yeah. So he's on a you know, so he, he, he should be okay. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, we just see how it goes. But you know, it's three three was it March end of March targeted for the start of the season. So there's quite a lot of time this time. It's not too early. Yeah, exactly. So going on to the more towards the British Championship side of things. Um, how do you think that's going to play out with this whole pandemic thing? Because I've had a few mixed results on the last couple of podcasts from people. The trouble is, I don't think anybody really knows, do they? <laughs> that's the thing. This and, is it. You know, you know, people say that it's probably going to be, you know, this whole British Championship could probably be not start on time. But, mm-hmm. you know, if, and you keep saying, you know, if you believe what you hear, but you hear so much, mm. you hear so much and contradictory and, you know, there's so many things going on that are double standards, and you know, if I, I'm, you know, in my in hard hearts, I'm hoping that if you know, if they do sort this this um, you know uh, vaccination out, mm-hmm. is the fact that hopefully we can get to some level of normality by springtime would be nice. But like I say, you just don't know. You know, twelve months ago, nobody expected. You could never imagine what we've we've actually been going through, you know, happening. So you just yeah, don't know absolutely. Who so we'll see. Absolutely. I think we'll just play it play it by ear and just hope, you know, we get through the other side and we do start the season and there's mm-hmm. no ups and downs where it's stopping and starting because of, you know, any recurrences. Yeah, definitely. So Dylan, just jumping back to you a sec. Um what have you got lined up over the next few months? Obviously, GP was a couple of weeks ago. Have you got a bit of downtime now or what are you doing? Uh, yeah, well, the decision was made for me uh, actually yesterday because we were planning on doing the the first seven East Coast Supercross rounds in America, but 
due mm-hmm. to the yeah, the pandemic and whatnot, I can't actually get into the country now being in Europe. So that's mm-hmm. put a halt to things. So I'm just going to, yeah, I've had a couple of weeks off, but I'm going to get back into training the next few weeks and, yeah, learn the bike and build the bike up and just, yeah, just get ready for, for the British and then what else ever comes up after that. Mm-hmm. Do you think it would be a bit of a big difference um, swapping over the manufacturers? No, no, I um, actually rode the the 2020 KX4, KXF450 in America mm-hmm. just before I came back to Europe this year. So it was, it was a nice bike there and it was completely standard, so I'm looking forward to it. Ah, oh, good. So, Sam, you've got your work cut out with these boys uh, looking after them next year. Um, Tell everyone on the podcast what sort of um, stuff goes on behind the scenes to to make the team work. Well, it's a big on, one. <laughs> yeah, with, with the bikes, obviously, it's a totally different bike than we've ever worked with. So we've got to start from the base up, pull them apart, uh, look at the engines, see what mm-hmm. we want to do there. Obviously, we've got our in-house engine shop and dyno cell, so that makes life a lot easier which is mm-hmm. all still there. The whole workshop's still set up from the 2019 season. Yep. Suspension is a big thing. Look at what, what way we go with suspension. And then to be fair, the rest of it is just preference. So bars, gearing, mm-hmm. uh, it's a bit really. All our suppliers from 2019 have all agreed to come back on board, which is really good. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy with that. So we've pretty much got all the sponsors in line now. So mm-hmm. and then it's just really logistics of the racing because for me, I'm still I'm full time in Revo itself, running the new performance yeah. center. So I kind of have to I'm doing both jobs. So it's just organizing. Like I've got some of the lads that helped with the Husky team are all going to come back. So Joe, the truck driver, he's going to come back just to drive the truck and obviously help at the weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the helpers are also going to come back. So I think it's going to work quite well, really. Oh, Brill. So big question, which whoever can answer this, I mean, I'll give you a medal, but um, going into next year, RHL have obviously taken over the championship. So things are going to be run a little bit differently. Um, what's your take on it? All right, I'll answer that. <laughs> I'm absolutely thrilled that's happened, actually, to be honest. Um, as much as, you know, the, the championship itself for the last few years, I think has started to decline, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Stuart, who was who put his heart and soul into into trying to improve the championship, uh, you know, he did everything he could. But obviously, his hands are tied to a certain degree. And, we, yeah. and I think for a while now, it, it needs someone, uh, a promoter that you know, someone like, you know, someone like Gareth who who does what he does with like the beach race to take this on, you know, take this on and and try and do something with it. Otherwise, mm-hmm. this whole this whole you know sport's going to be on its backside. I mean, yeah. it's not. That, it's not. In all fairness, I would have said it's close to being on that anyway. But I'm hoping. You know, I think I'm looking forward to 2021 and seeing what Gareth can do with RHL mm-hmm. and his team. Obviously, it's not just Gareth; it's you guys <laughs> and everyone else. So, so I think it's only good. Yeah, I think yeah. It's only ideally, good. looking at it, would you say there's from a team's perspective would there be anything that you would want to implement into the championship or in your head what would be your ideal sort of championship really for the team a bar on site at side <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote on that one as well <laughs> um no I th- you know the, the problem with with motors cross you know the, the weather we have in this country is very hard I mean that's why I say in other countries hot countries it's easy people plan two weeks ahead to go somewhere uh with a family and, and do something mm-hmm. uh, and you, you can do that we haven't got to worry about what the weather's going to be doing I think because of this country and the way things do go with the weather people can't plan like that but I think mm-hmm. what does need to happen is trying to find a way of somehow of getting you know family family families interested in the sport again where they do come and uh, you know spectate toward yeah it needs that so it just needs probably you know pretty much a lot like the Red Bull series used to have with Matt Bates you know trying to put a little bit more stuff on and especially on the two day events you know when the day, when the two day events is try and have something on that 
will attract families with, with younger children to, to, mm-hmm. to have a day out. Yeah, defo. Um, I know obviously we're going to be looking at implementing the live stream across um, the British Championship next year. How do you think that will give a bit more value to, to sponsors and, and teams? Uh, well, it, anything like that does because obviously I mean, obviously in previous years it's been televised on, on uh, Eurosport. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, you know, we, we used to obviously sponsor the Championship over the last few years. With, mm-hmm. with, and, and have our band reach out, and I, and to be honest, we, you know, we watch the TV coverage and the playback that comes upon Eurosport, and you know, I've, I feel we, we, we got an awful lot out of that, a lot of coverage out of it, mm-hmm. and obviously any exposure like that, and subject to the size of the audience you're targeting with, with this live stream, um, you know, yeah, I mean, that's what that's what sponsors need. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, Dylan, this is, I'd say probably this is more a bit of a question for you, really. Um, now we're going to be bringing uh, the youth riders back into the British as well. So sort of giving them a bit of something to look forward to on the weekend, I guess. Um, what would you look for as in a youth rider, for example, if you were a team boss? Um, yeah, that's a hard one. Uh yeah. <laughs> well, no, I just look for someone that um is yeah, dedicated dedicated to the sport and um is willing just to go the extra mile to be better. Mhm. And sort of what advice would you um give to the younger kids that, are, for example, see you riding at the British Championship on a weekend and and want to be where you are? Um just uh to stick at it, just yeah. Every time you're on the bike, try your hardest, never give up, and mm-hmm. you're not too young. You just yeah, you got to just stay at it. And uh, if you work hard enough, it's achievable for anybody to yeah be where they want to be. Mm-hmm. So Sam, I know you mentioned about throwing in a bar at the weekends at the British, um, yeah. but. What sort of um, things would you do extra as a team across the weekend? Because whenever I've seen you guys at Revo, you always look pretty close and you all seem to get on well. Yeah, no. Well, for us, for sure, obviously, Revo is a a car tuning business. Mm -hmm. So for us, I think we've already spoke to Gareth about putting a display of our cars on and just making it more more inviting for people than just like trucks parked up and people racing it pulls I think it'll pull more of a crowd in with just yeah. other stuff to look at as well you know mm-hmm. and especially for us as a sponsor and a team like promoting is why we're doing it so mm-hmm. I think it, it stuff like that it make it make quite an impression it will definitely make the paddock fill out a bit more mm-hmm. so just displays you know for sure. Are you going to be um, going and doing MX Nationals and bits and bobs as well? We we may do a few. I'm not. We're not. I don't think we're going to commit to the whole series because obviously we also want want to do maybe five like low. Well, I say local, not local, but the closer <laughs> GPs. <laughs> yeah. So, but it like me and Dylan discussed if we if we'd go and do an MX National, me and him would probably just drive down in a van, race, mm-hmm. and you know, just a bit more low key. Mm-hmm. There's like you know yourself, it's quite a lot. It's a long season to do both championships with a truck and everything else, as well yeah, as then absolutely. try and get to the GPs as well. So we'll do, we'll just play that one by ear, I think. I <laughs> don't blame you. You're gonna have your hands <laughs> full next year. <laughs> um, so big question: Who do you think you guys will be up against next year in the British paddock? Who do, who do, who's going to answer that one? I think we'll you can all you can all have an answer on this one if you like. Um, I'll, I'll start then, and we'll move around the table here. Go on then. Uh, to be honest, um, obviously Tommy. Mm-hmm. Tommy's there. Um, Harry Kulas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nichols. Jay Nichols. You know, J- J- yes, Jay's doing. You know, I'm sure he's going to go well again on the Honda. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't. Who else we got really? I mean. Mill Ward on his day. Mill Ward on his day, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah I think Mill Ward on his day. Um, but yeah, I think that that's you, you, there's going to probably there's going to be five or six riders there at the front who's going to be really Simpson strong. if he does it. Yeah, oh, it's obviously I've got to count out uh, um, Sean as well. Obviously, uh, Sean's probably going to be. I would say Sean would be probably 
one of the main contenders, really, mm-hmm. to be honest. This is it. I was thinking about this the other day because I was trying to rack my brains about um, what riders we've kind of been missing, you know, this year or the yeah. year previous. But like you say, we've got Sean, obviously Elliot's had Elliot. that year out. So yeah, is there rumours? Is he coming back or? There, there is rumours. Uh, actually, Sam, actually, probably Sam can... Oh, I've he, just, he probably I've, can't I've, say to him. I've just heard a rumour. He's just had a rumour. <laughs> <laughs> there's a rumour, you know, the typical motocross rumour. Yeah. Yeah. As fact, there's a rumour that we're coming back racing as well, apparently. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Elliot as well. Um, yeah. But from a consistency point, um, you know, it's got Tommy, it? so, to, Tommy and, and yeah. Sean are probably the two most consistent riders. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I say Harry, again, he's... Harry probably then, then there's Harry but um, yeah you, you just don't know I think it's just going to be a case of you know staying up right and doing well this is it um, Sam what do you think to that one yeah probably the same to be fair mm-hmm. my my biggest three would probably be Tommy Kulas and mm-hmm. Sean and Nichols on his day and yeah. then probably Millward depending on what side of the bed he wakes up on <laughs> but when he, when he when he's going, he's going good. So he, he, I wouldn't rule him out. And it's also yeah, important definitely. to cross out. Obviously, we got we have got James Dunn as well, which I think James yes. is capable of, of, of having. A, he, I think he's capable of a podium on 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 a good mm-hmm. day for James. A podium is there. Mm-hmm. So you know he mixed it up last year a couple of times. So you know with 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 being in the team and having the right support, I'm hoping you know that will build a lot of confidence in him and and, and he can do extremely well as well yeah for sure and Dylan what about you yeah I guess all the names that they named and um, I think Sterry's also racing oh yeah oh is he yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 oh is he yeah. coming back to British then is he yeah so that's uh, a good mix of, mix of riders and yeah just everyone that's going to be racing GPs too with the mm-hmm. that's coming back and forth they've got yeah they're just the racing experience yeah it'll be quite good for sure well I can't wait to see what the setup looks like going into next year because obviously you've gone from a year of being husky if is everything getting changed are you all going green with everything uh well it'll be green and black yeah with no no more fluoro yellow (laughs) obviously what we were known for with the fluoro so it's a bit of a change yeah of course so we're just trying to sort that out now. And like Sam said earlier, in all fairness, you know, this is only this this time last week was when we decided to do this. Uh-huh. So it's a, a week's gone by and we've achieved an awful lot in a week. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, and it's it's been pleasing that we've managed to get most near near all, but most of our 2019 product sponsors on board. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. And the thing awesome. is, for me, I mean, the reason for Sam taking over is the fact that I do need to focus on our core business at Revo, which is something I don't want to detract from too much. So yeah. my role is there just as a principal, and I'll be at the races for sure. But um, mm-hmm. it's really that Sam can, you know, take charge of this so it doesn't actually distract me too much. No pressure then, Sam. No, I've <laughs> done it all last year, so I should be all right. <laughs> got the t-shirt. He's got the t-shirt. Oh. He'll have the video at the end of this year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right all then. Right. But you know, basically, we're there. Revo Seven Kawasaki. We, you mm-hmm. know, we did a motion. James done, and it's full British and a handful of GPs. You know, that's and, and our goal for this year or for 2021 is to, to win that back-to-back British title in MX1. For Dylan to do that. Brill. Good stuff. Uh, so I think that will round up this special bonus episode of the Live Motocross podcast. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, if you want to catch up with the Revo guys, stay tuned to Live Motocross and see how they get on later on in the race season. Oh, yeah.